Nano Banana Pro is here, hot off the heels of their Gemini 3 launch. This is a brand new image generator model for Google. And all the things you're seeing on the screen right now were generated using Nano Banana Pro. And spoiler alert, it's pretty incredible. But don't just take my word for it. In this video, I'm going to show you what this model is truly capable of and show you some of the best tips and tricks for getting pro level results with it. You're not going to want to miss this, so let's go. Now, I'm personally using Nano Banana Pro on Higgsfield's platform, the sponsor of today's video. I'll leave a link in the description box so you can go ahead and check that out. All right, so in terms of how to access it, when you're on the Higgsfield homepage, you're going to click right here on the Nano Banana Pro button and it's gonna bring you right to this page. Now, one of the great things about using this new model on the Higgsfield website is I can handle up to about 14 different reference images, which is a ton of context that you can give it, which is only gonna improve the quality of the results that you get. Okay, so for the first test, let's test the consistency. I wanna see if it can handle three distinct visual inputs without messing them up. All right, so I'm gonna give it this bottle of sparkling water that you see right here. Then I'm gonna give it an image of this specific woman right here. And then I'm going to give it a t-shirt with a complex graphic on it so we can see how it does with actually keeping the graphic the same. And then I'm going to give it this prompt, cinematic medium shot of a woman standing on a balcony in Santorini, Greece. She's turned three quarters profile facing the camera, backlit by golden hour sunset. She's raising her green glass of sparkling water bottle in the reference image to toast to the sunset. Sunlight is refracting through the glass. She's wearing a graphic t-shirt shown in the reference image. Lighting is warm, photorealistic. Now I've got the 16 by nine aspect ratio selected at the bottom. And then we also have the option to generate a 1K, 2K and 4K resolution. So I'm gonna just select 2K. All right, so it works for a few minutes and here's what it generates. Look at this result. Oh my gosh, this looks amazing. The lighting is perfect golden hour. The likeness of her is spot on, but the text on the bottle and the graphic on the t-shirt is absolutely perfect. It nailed the three specific visual references in one coherent shot. That used to be almost impossible. Okay, so we can see that photorealism is great, but what about complex design work with lots of text? This is where image generator models typically fall down a bit. Even Nano Banana's previous version really struggled with this at times. So for this next test, let's take a product and turn it into an educational infographic just to see what this can do. All right, so I'm gonna give it this carbon fiber running shoe. And I want a technical kind of exploded view infographic showing the sole layers, the mesh and the laces. Something that maybe a running shoe company would have on their social media or in their stores just to educate customers about what's actually in the shoe. All right, so here's my prompt. Design a technical infographic poster visualizing a high performance carbon fiber running shoe. Show illustrated features, highlights including multi-layered sole structure, breathable mesh upper material, integrated speed plate concept and advanced lacing system. Use energetic sports graphics. So for my aspect ratio here, I'm going to select 9 by 16 because I want it to be more of a poster kind of layout. And then also I'm going to select 4K for my resolution because I want to show you how 4K looks versus 2K. All right. So after working for about a minute or so, here is what it generated. I think that looks really, really good. You could see that all the text on there is spelled correctly. It has exactly kind of what I was envisioning in terms of, you know, where the energy insert is, the midsole foam, like all these technical terms that running shoe companies would want to communicate about the shoe is it's all there, which is great. It also captured the look of the shoe from the original reference image that I gave it very well. But what if we wanted this infographic to be done more with our own brand's aesthetics? Well, I'm going to show you how we can make this design more consistent with our brand. Now, one pro tip to get the utmost consistent results is actually to create brand requirements for this logo that we have, which gives the AI even more context as to what we're looking for. So we're going to head over to Gemini and I'm going to give it an image of our overall brand vibe and I'm going to give it this prompt. Here's an image of my running shoe brand. Create a brand guideline document for this logo, Perform Ignite, the name of our brand and the overall vibe. All right, so you can see it's generated this document here, which has our brand identity in here. It's got our visual signature, the vibe. It's got color palettes in here, imagery direction, lots of different details that are helpful to the AI. And now we're going to go ahead and give these instructions to Nano Banana Pro. Now, sometimes the brand guidelines can be a little bit long in terms of text, and it may not always fit within the character limit of Higgsfield's Nano Banana Pro. So I'm going to show you a quick workaround of how to deal with that. We can copy and paste this into a Google Doc, and then we could take screenshots of each page of the document. And once we have our screenshots, we can then go back to Higgsfield. And of course, we're going to upload the original infographic that we had before and the screenshots. And my prompt is just going to say, modify the infographic shown in the reference image to adhere to the brand guidelines for Perform Ignite. Make the images on the infographic look more realistic, but don't change the information shown. It's perfect. All right. And here's the output that we get. That looks great. 
look at the difference. You could see that it's actually more consistent with the information we gave it in terms of our brand guidelines. And it kept the data identical, but completely overhauled the aesthetic based on what we gave it as a screenshot. So now we can use that exact same brand guideline and use that to generate other images for the same brand to make sure everything feels consistent and cohesive. All right, now this next technique is pretty neat. I'm gonna show you how you can replicate any complex artistic style that you see online without knowing the technical prompt terms. So I saw this really neat image online and it almost has like a radial frequency kind of look to it, but I have no idea how to prompt for that. So we're going to head right back to Gemini. I'm going to give it the reference image that I'm talking about. And I'm going to say, write an entire brief for this brand identity around the style effect being used in the image. Be very specific, get as detailed as you can so that if, if we were to give this information to someone else, they would be able to accurately recreate this style for every image they create. All right, so Gemini has come up with our creative brief right here, all the information that we need in order to recreate this design. So again, I'm gonna copy the output from Gemini and then I'm gonna paste it into a Google Doc. But again, if it's short enough, you can actually just paste it straight into Higgsfield as well. I'm gonna then take the screenshots of each of these pages and then I'm gonna upload them right into Higgsfield again. So we're gonna head back over to Higgsfield and then I'm gonna upload those screenshots as my images. And I thought that this would look really neat with some headphones because of that frequency, that radio frequency kind of look in the image. I thought like kind of looked like sound waves almost. So I'm going to upload a picture of some headphones and then I'm going to give it a very straightforward prompt that says based off of this creative brief, create an image with these headphones in a graphic poster style. And based on that, here's what it came up with. I think it did an absolutely awesome job of this. I think it captured that same radio frequency look really well based on the written instructions. And you could see that the headphones that we gave it are also part of the image. This is kind of a neat image that you could put on a t-shirt or a poster or something. I think it looks really cool. So this is a really great way of coming up with unique designs that other people wouldn't normally think of. Now, I wanted to show you a few quick examples that prove that this model isn't just generating nice images. It truly understands the concepts inside the image. All right, so for the first test, I actually give it this pasta image here, the seafood pasta image. And then my prompt is just show me a photo of all the ingredients for this dish labeled with the names and quantities. And after it does its thing and it works for about a minute or so, here's what we get. First of all, the image looks beautiful, but it's also extremely accurate. It got the seafood, the garlic, the herbs. It even captured the bread. Now, it didn't break down the ingredients in the bread, but I wasn't expecting it to do that. But it reverse engineered the pasta recipe just by looking at the final image. Now, for the next test, let's see if it's really truly mastered the ability to translate text in a different language. So I'm going to give it this box of pasta right here, which you could see has text on the side and on the front. So we can test this translation ability. And I'm just going to give it this straightforward prompt. Translate the text on the box into French and generate the new image. Keep everything else the same. And here's what we get. As someone who speaks French, I think it did an amazing job on this translation. All the text seems coherent. Doesn't seem like there's any made up words here. Even on the side of the box where the text is a lot smaller, it seems like it got all that pretty much accurate, which is Super impressive. All right. And here's another test that I wanted to do with just a simple prompt to see how it handles like a one sentence prompt. So I'm going to give it this image of a purse here, the shot of a nice bag. And I'm going to say here, turn this product into a full ad campaign mood board using creative angles and lighting. And here is what it generated. I think this looks really nice. Looks like something you would actually find in a magazine or something. The bag looks very consistent in all the images here, the strap, the look of the leather, all of that, the belt looks really good. It honestly gave me exactly what I was looking for. It took the image and actually imagined like an entire photo shoot around it. Really cool. And for this last example, I wanted to test its understanding of geography. So let's give it an aerial view of Disney World right here with this image. And I want to see what it does if we ask it to zoom in 50 times into this image. So let's give it that prompt to zoom in 50 times. And here's what it came up with. I think this looks really impressive. It looks very accurate. You can see that the castle is still within view, but just closer. And then I wanted to actually get a little bit closer to the castle to see. So I actually asked it to, to zoom into the image by 67 times. And then this is what it generated. You can see that at this point, we're right up to the castle. You can see like a close up of it. Very cool. So what are my overall thoughts? I think it's absolutely outstanding, honestly. Its ability to follow instructions really well and capture exactly what I have in mind is next level. I'm still in shock over how well it handles text now as well, because that's always been a frustration of mine with the first generation Nano Banana. And in my opinion, it absolutely blows all other image generation models out of the water. 
It's definitely the best one I've tried to date. If you enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. And if you want to learn more, I have a private community on school where we do weekly videos, live workshops, and you get access to a community of like-minded people who are learning how to leverage AI and automation in their business work and life. I'll put a link in the description box below. And if you want to learn more about how to use AI to level up your work and your life, then click this next video.